Welcome back everyone to my lecture series on PDEs. In this video we're going to introduce parabolic PDEs. I've chosen to start with parabolic PDEs because they're the simplest to deal with and are very readily understood. The simplest second order parabolic partial differential equation you can come up with is the following. The derivative of u with respect to t equals its second partial derivative with respect to x. This equation is commonly referred to as the one-dimensional heat equation or diffusion equation. I won't derive it right now, but I will say that it's possible to derive it using the conservation of energy or mass and either Fourier or Fick's law depending on what version you want, the heat equation or the diffusion equation. But in the end, the phenomena of heat propagation and molecular diffusion are very similar, so they're both described by the same equation. It's just that u represents something different in either case. Instead of deriving the equation, I'll tell you what it means physically. Now you know from basic calculus that the first derivative tells you how fast the function u is changing with respect to another variable, while the second derivative tells you how fast the derivative is changing. A better term for this you might have heard is concavity. So if my function u of x is concave up, then its second derivative is positive. It curls up. Here's what a typical concave up function might look like. Now say I have three adjacent points in this concave up function, one at x minus h, another at x, and another at x plus h. Let's look at the average value of u at the point surrounding x, in other words the average of u of x minus h and u of x plus h, both of which are points surrounding x, and let's compare that average value to u of x. Well, if I draw a straight line between these two points, then the average value of the surrounding points which is half of u of x plus h plus u of x minus h, is right here in the middle of this line segment. Because the function u is concave up, the average value of the surrounding points is higher than the value of u at the point x. If we're talking in terms of temperature, then the temperature at x is less than the average temperature at the immediately surrounding points, so we have a relative cold spot at x. Because of this, the temperature, which is represented by the value of u at x, it tends to increase or equilibrate in order to compensate for the fact that it's relatively cold here. As a result, u tends to increase at x, or du dt is greater than zero. We could apply the same argument to any other phenomenon described by this equation. So for instance, in diffusion, if the concentration of u at x is low relative to the average surrounding concentration, then material will tend to diffuse towards x. On the other hand, if u is concave down, then its second derivative will be negative. It might look something like this, a function that curls downwards. Again, if I have three adjacent points at x minus h, x, and x plus h, then because the function is concave down now, the average value of u between the surrounding points x minus h and x plus h is now less than the average value of u at x. In other words, we have a relative hot spot, or a region of relatively high concentration if we're talking in terms of diffusion. Because of this, the temperature or concentration, whatever u represents, it tries to equilibrate with the surroundings by decreasing. This is why if u is concave down at a particular point, then du dt is less than zero at that point because u wants to decrease in order to match its average value in the surroundings. In the end, what the heat or diffusion equation says is that the rate at which a function u could be temperature, could be concentration, the rate at which the function u changes at a point is proportional to its concavity at that point. And this explanation at the side was a justification of that physically. That concavity was indicative of the average value of u at the surroundings relative to a certain particular point. Hopefully you've understood it. I briefly mentioned in this discussion the word equilibrate. I said that because quantities like temperature and concentration both represented by u in this PDE, because these quantities tend to equilibrate, the value of u at a particular point changes in order to more closely match its value in the immediately surrounding area. In fact, systems that are described by the heat or diffusion equation are those which tend to equilibrate. This fact is actually shown in a very well-known theorem called the maximum principle. This theorem states that if u is described by the parabolic PDE given above, 
in a domain D from 0 to L, then its maximum value occurs either at the start or somewhere at the boundaries. The maximum value cannot occur anywhere in the interior of the domain after t equals 0. The only exception to this is if u remains constant everywhere. It's possible to prove this theorem, both the strong and weak forms of it, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do, we'll just skip that and say the proof is trivial. By now you're probably used to hearing this from your incredibly lazy math professors. I'm just going to try to show what the maximum principle means in terms of how the solution described by the 1D heater diffusion equation looks like with time. It'll give you an idea of what you're trying to solve for. If my u starts out something like this, and is such that its values at the boundaries are equal, then according to the maximum principle there's no way it can go up for times beyond zero to give a new maximum. Instead, u is going to shift down as time goes on, and eventually fizz out or equilibrate to become a flat line as we get to steady state. Similarly, if the value of u at one boundary is larger than the value at the other boundary, then if my function starts out something like this, there's no way it's going to rise back up above what it was originally. Instead, it's going to settle back down and then reach the straight equilibrium line. In fact, in addition to the maximum principle, we also have the minimum principle. This just says that if a function u is described by the 1D heat or diffusion equation, its minimum value is achieved either at t equals zero or somewhere at the boundaries unless it happens to remain constant. We can show this minimum principle just by applying the maximum principle but now to negative u of xt, which would satisfy the same PDE as u. So hopefully you guys understood that and now appreciate the properties of the parabolic PDE in the context of the 1D diffusion equation. In the next video we're actually going to begin solving these differential equations using a special technique called separation of variables.